Donald Trump enters the spin room. After the Donald Trump Kamala Harris debate, most people would have no idea that there was a hundred reporters waiting in the spin room for the chance to talk to the presidential candidates for 2024. After the debate, which 100% of corporate media pundits said Kamala Harris won, Harris ran for her limousine and got the heck out of there. Donald Trump, after debating Kamala Harris for 90 minutes, walked back to the spin room to chat with reporters. Okay, so think of the perspective of this journalist. I think it might be a journalist from ABC News because they're hosting the event. But this reporter is angry that Donald Trump came to speak with them after the debate. Now think about this event. All of these reporters had to fly here, had to come in there just on the off chance that they may be able to speak with a presidential candidate. And this reporter is angry that Donald Trump came to talk with him. Listen to him again. They've destroyed our country, so uh, I hope you're all having a good time. Apparently it's not. It's a very interesting uh, evening. Yeah, so, Mr. President, if you're so confident you won tonight, why are you here? Why not let the performance... If you're so confident you won tonight, why are you here? Think about what this reporter went through in journalism school that formed his political biases to be livid with rage that Republican candidate Donald Trump came backsta backstage to speak with him. This is a reporter who was trained in journalism school or has a, some kind of communications degree. That's what you learned in school, really. And that's how you best represent your news network, by attacking the man who came back here to talk to you. And if you think about it, this reporter is probably very upset that Kamala Harris did not come backstage to talk about uh, Taylor Swift's endorsement of Kamala Harris. Maybe this reporter would get to discuss his favorite Taylor Swift's songs with Kamala Harris. That's how he dreamed of this evening. But instead, he stuck with Donald Trump. How horrible for these reporters to have to speak to a presidential candidate. Also, this is a presidential candidate who was shot, and these reporters have a chance to speak to someone who survived an assassination attempt, which they won't mention again on any of their newscasts or news stories that they file, by the way. Uh, I hope you're all having a good time, but it was a very interesting uh, evening. So, yeah, so, Mr. President, if you're so confident you won tonight, why are you here? Why not let the performance speak for itself? Well, I think it did, but people said, would I come here? And I made an obligation to a couple of people that I'm going to do their show. But it was a, uh, I thought it was a great night. Mr. So, Mr. I 
have no idea. How shallow of these reporters. We are in a proxy war with Russia in Ukraine. Iran is orchestrating more attacks on the state of Israel. China is eyeballing an invasion of Taiwan. North Korea is threatening some kind of military missile strikes. We have a world in great danger. And these mindless, shallow reporters are focused on Taylor Swift. I'll tell you, Taylor Swift was probably approached by the Democratic National Committee at the start of 2024 to give a late, last-minute endorsement of Joe Biden. Joe Biden was swapped out. But they probably told Taylor Swift, if you give us a late endorsement of our candidate, we will line up a number of lucrative corporate deals for you and your albums and your tours. If you see Taylor Swift being pushed at your local retail outlet like Walmart, was a deal worked out at the start of this year or at the end of the last year in order to push her career? Because nobody I know is listening to Taylor Swift in 2024. Nobody listens to her music at the, that I know of. And yet suddenly she's everywhere. Why? Because she was going to arrange for a big voter's registration drive for Kamala Harris. That's why. The fix is in. What kind of analysis is this by these reporters when Republicans are complaining about moderators? Well, gosh, the moderators at ABC News didn't fact check Kamala Harris once, almost as if they were on the same team. Prepared. No, I thought the moderators were very unfair, but it basically was three on one. And But I thought they were very unfair, the moderators. Everybody did. But despite that, they're saying that the debate was Why a victory. Were you, were you prepared for that? Were you prepared for that kind of debate? Yeah, I just... Why weren't you prepared for that, sir? Why weren't you prepared for that kind of debate? So in the shallow reporter's mind, if two moderators and the Democrat opponent are debating Trump for 90 minutes, three people, then that means Donald Trump wasn't prepared for that debate. Well, he was prepared for that debate, and he still debated three people and came backstage to talk to these snide reporters. You know, Donald Trump said there wouldn't be a third debate, and they're calling him a chicken. This chicken survives an assassination attempt of being shot in the head and he's still running and yet all these news outlets are attacking him assume the moderators would be bad because that right there is the worst of all the news networks in my opinion and it always has been young <laughs> he's probably saying that to a guy with an abc uh a lapel on his shirt he put that guy in his place abc news the worst news outlet as confirmed by their biased moderators well, she wants a second debate because she lost tonight very badly. So they want, they immediately call for a second debate because they lost. So we'll, you know, think about that. But uh, she immediately called for a second. Look, we're looking at call. Yeah, if you won the debate, why would you call for another debate? And in fact, this was not Trump's first debate. Donald Trump had to debate two different candidates for the Democratic Party's nomination this year. It's not his fault that they swap Joe Biden out. And these same news organizations told us that Joe Biden said the truth and won every single point of the Trump-Biden debate. And they also said Trump lied for 90 minutes during the Trump-Biden debate this year. So if Trump lied for 90 minutes, why did Biden quit? The spin and reality do not match. We're looking at polls. The worst, the worst poll that we've had was 71 that I see. I know my video is desynchronized, but I'll have 10 views on this video, so it doesn't matter anyway. You can go watch the original clip at NBC News. Yeah, if you won the debate, like they say Kamala Harris won the debate, why would she ask for another one? This is the same Kamala Harris that can't dare to speak to a room full of reporters at a press conference like this. Why can't Kamala Harris stand there and take random questions from a hundred reporters? 
Donald Trump is fearless, and yet they're calling him a chicken. Kamala Harris is already mixing her second margarita by this point after the debate. She didn't dare talk to any of these reporters, and the toughest questions they were going to ask her is how much she loves Taylor Swift. And yet Kamala Harris could not handle speaking to random reporters. If she can't do that, how is she qualified to speak to the leaders of Russia or China? She's not. Thank you. What, what, who are you with? Trump was enthusiastic, positive, loving on his service. He wants to ask him about the war in Gaza. can't tell by the hard to hear audio and those shaky camera angles this was not an expected or planned appearance by former president trump in that spin room in philadelphia why are you upset about that at nbc news why are you talking over donald trump you didn't get any appearance from your candidate kamala harris the official candidate of nbc news whom all of your nbc staff endorse and will vote for so you got one candidate here, and you're talking over him. He's only going to speak for another two minutes, and you're talking over him in order to give some kind of NBC News spin. Why? Because the director at the NBC News control room said, Mute Trump, let's talk over him because what he's saying is harmful to our candidate and the Democratic Party. That's the only reason NBC News would be talking over Donald Trump here, and it's a disgrace. He simply showed up. You heard him talk about that. He walked Oh, from- what a crime. Donald Trump simply showed up. He's worse than the worst fascist for showing up and talking to reporters without a script. Kamala Harris can't talk to reporters without a script. And there's ample evidence that the ABC News moderators specifically chose their questions to be things that Kamala Harris would have a prepared answer for of where a number of reporters gathered, including our Garrett Haig. He's walking back over now, a little closer to the microphones, it seems. Let's listen back in for just a second. That means that the NBC News director is yelling at this moron, get away from the, the donut station and go ask Trump a question, you idiot. But instead, we've got Kamala Harris, who had to be spoon-fed questions about climate change and January 6th, because those are not topics in the polls that matter to the American people. But... ABC News, they didn't focus on foreign policy because they figured Kamala Harris would be weak on foreign policy. So you've got a chance here to ask Donald Trump some questions. Let's hear the hard-hitting questions they've got for him. Let's see if that's any better. The vice president, he's, uh, you know, the office of the vice president. And certainly, he's certainly... If you take a look at it, she was terrible... If you're too lazy to walk up to him, then don't shout questions. And she wasn't able to do that tonight. I think it was a big thing. They wanted to disassociate with Biden, and they weren't able to do it. Kamala Harris did attempt to disassociate with Joe Biden, and yet at the same time, she wanted to boast of the accomplishments of Biden-Harris. How do you do those two things? The, the moderators never asked her, because they never attempted to press Kamala Harris on a single one of her premises because they agreed with her premises and will vote for Kamala Harris at ABC News. Now, Donald Trump clearly answered in the debate, and these reporters were listening, when asked about Project 2025, which is a project by the Heritage Foundation, a think tank. He said, I haven't read it. That's as clear an answer as you can get. So this reporter already knows this. His only purpose is to badger Donald Trump and attack him and provide the Democratic Party with a talking point about, ooh, Donald Trump has a creepy plan from Project 2025. But this reporter already knows that Donald Trump fully and clearly answered that at the debate. He hasn't even read the Project 2025 platform. It's not his platform. It's not his plan. So if you already know Donald Trump clearly answered that at the debate, and he's only going to be speaking to you for another minute, why would you waste his time asking something he already answered one hour ago? These reporters 
must have flunked out of journalism school and just been hired because they work for the Democratic Party. What a stupid reporter. A lot of people have said Donald Trump didn't push back forcefully enough against Kamala Harris and her premises, but I believe he didn't do any debate prep other than being told, don't attack Kamala Harris directly or you'll be called a sexist pig. And so Donald Trump, if you go back and look at his debate style with Joe Biden this year, he had an identical performance and presentation, an angle of attack, attacking Biden-Harris policies in both debates, Donald Trump had the same approach to Joe Biden as he did Kamala Harris. What does that tell you? That tells, that tells you that Donald Trump treated these candidates equally. He did not have a special rule or approach for Kamala Harris. He treated her identically to Joe Biden. Go back and watch, if you can, the first debate, and then watch the second debate. Donald Trump is consistent throughout. He's going after their policies and says he would do a better job. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do in a presidential debate. I don't see where he had any flaws in his debating performance. Certainly not in debating three separate people who are continually attacking him through the whole debate. Looks like NBC News not really pushing to get their camera up there. Camera closer into this gaggle, into this scrum. Obviously, he travels with secret. Yeah, obviously, the director at the NBC newsroom, he's screaming at that reporter on the scene, "Get in there closer, you loser!" The former president. There's a bubble, a bit of a bubble, at least around him. He's walking around talking to people. Tommy, I'm as well. We're watching. Well, why would he talk to you? You just lie for the Democratic Party 24 hours a day. I'd ignore you too. I'd go to some of those smaller news outlet reporters and talk to them. Maybe you'd actually have a chance of getting your comments to your viewers or readers if Donald Trump speaks to one of the smaller news outlets. NBC News is not going to give him a fair shake. Yes, and I want to keep this up in case we get it better. And there's Andrea Mitchell. Let's listen in for a sec. So these report, these have stupid NBC uh, reporters back in their newsroom were talking over NBC senior correspondent Andrea Mitchell, who was asking Trump a question. They're talking over her and just say stupid stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Not a happy face in that room. These reporters despise Donald Trump. They loathe Donald Trump voters. And they hate anyone who would potentially vote for Donald Trump and may not be decided until they hear one of these debates. But these reporters, look at these angry faces, one after another. They just wanted to sit there and hold Kamala Harris's hand after the debate chat about, maybe do a sing-along of some Taylor Swift songs that they all like. And instead, they have to talk to Donald Trump, the evil fascist candidate who happened to get shot campaigning, by the way, because of the hate stirred up against him by the Democrat news media. These people are angry that Donald Trump stopped to talk to them. And I would ask why. This is not journalism. This is not reporting of any style. Just blew past Andrea Mitchell. She's not as important as she thought she was. What about black voters, Mr. President? What do you think black voters? I love, I love black voters. I love them and they love me too. Now, isn't that just summarizing? the entire corporate news media's attitude towards Donald Trump and anyone who, do, who is not going to vote for Kamala Harris. This idiot reporter screams at Donald Trump, Mr. Trump, what do you think of black voters? Like he's going to start screaming his hatred of black people when Donald Trump is the only person trying to get black people a fair job. But Democrats keep pushing a $25 an hour minimum wage, which means no black people 
will be hired at entry-level jobs in any Democrat-run city. But this stupid reporter had a chance to ask Donald Trump something of substance, and says she screams at him about whether he hates black people. These reporters are evil. These are evil people. They hate this country, they hate America, and they hate the fact that anyone could even consider not voting for Kamala Harris. Let's listen to her again. What a great statement, and completely honest and from the heart. These reporters do not work for the American people. They do not work for truth, justice, and the American way. They work for evil corporations that wish to see a socialist presidency in our country. Because people can be easily controlled under a socialist president. Oh yeah, it's true. You take a look at it. No, that's true. It's nonsense. It's true. Authority. Okay, well, you can check it out. Check, check with the authorities. say the truth. I say the truth. If I lose votes or gain votes, I don't care. But uh, this was my best debate. I thought it was very good. I thought she was very weak on foreign policy. She was very weak on the border. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Look at that crowd. There's one reporter who looks happy, and it's just because he's talking to the other reporter. But you've got a room full of angry Democratic Party reporters, all registered to vote Democrat. All of their friends are Democrats. All of their co-workers at their news agencies are Democrats, their news editors are Democrats, and the owners of their corporate media news outlets are Democrats. So they've got a candidate in front of them, and none of them seem to be happy to see Donald Trump. I wonder why. <laughs> so former President Trump here holding court in the spin room there in Philly. Tom now for the last two minutes of this NBC News segment, They've got a chance to play Donald Trump answering questions. They begin to talk over Donald Trump's comments. If you look here, they start. To, they just turn him off and start talking over his comments as he, as he heads out. But to NBC News, they are so arrogant that they think that this nitwits analysis that they've got there on screen is more important than what Donald Trump came to talk to the reporters about. This is how arrogant these people are. They think they are more important than the election. And this is why the American people no longer trust the corporate news media. Thank you.